This is Knight's Retreat. Uh, from what I could tell from the trailer, it seems to be a chess-based puzzle game. And uh, after playing a bunch of post-void just now, I think I need something to bring my adrenaline level down. So let's play something that is nice, contemplative, and cerebral. Starting with level one. All right. So I can right click to move the camera around. Uh, oh, I can zoom in and out. Okay, good to know. And then I can click this guy and be like, okay, well, he's a knight in chess. So that means he moves two squares in one direction and one square in another direction. And I'm trying to get him to that gold destination. And it looks like I can never go backwards. They destroy whatever tile I leave. And then, oh yeah. So this just feels like a refresher of what it was like to be to, to play chess in chess club. It's like you always had to, you know, when you're using a knight, you always have to think through like, okay, where could I get this guy in the next three moves? Like, I can't get, like, if, you know, if you're just, like, diagonal from a space, like, okay, I need to go out and then back in again. Or if you're, you know, right next to a space, you would sort of memorize these series of moves that you could do in order to get a knight where you want them, because their, their movement style is so, um, uh, just sort of oddball. Okay, so it seems like what I want to do is move this guy over here, but I, so, okay, so I need to move, okay, so the white knight I can move and it doesn't, it doesn't destroy the tile. Oh, but being here doesn't actually help. Oh, what, why did I do that? That doesn't even make any sense. Can I, let's back this up. I can just go straight to the goal from here. I don't need to go where the white knight was. Hey there, Ms. Paint. Uh, this is a chess-driven puzzle game. I would not call this a chess game. This is a this is a game that relies on your knowledge of chess, and this is what they expected me to do if I was stupid. Okay, so I need to go here, and then here, and then wait. Why did I go here? I keep doing this dumb thing where I'll just get close to the goal when I could actually go directly to the goal. So let's just move these guys out of the way. Move this guy over. That's all it takes. It's funny how I'll like get in my own head and just make the absolute obvious wrong move. Okay, so to get here, the only place I can go is here. And I get there from here. So then I need to get rid of this guy. So to get rid of this guy, I need one of these to move. So this one can move and then that one can move and then I can move him here. And him here. All right, there we go. I hope that people who don't play chess can understand what's going on here. Like once you've played a, a bunch of chess, you you know you just sort of intrinsically see, you see a horse shaped piece and you're like, oh, I know how that moves. You see a castle shaped piece, you're like, oh, that's a rook that moves sideways. This is a really nice, effective intro. It's like they really are just, they, they did a good job of coming up with a way to teach me the mechanics of this game, just one simple move at a time. Okay, so I need to get here. And I can get there from here. So, like that, that, and that. There we go. Randolph Court says, Did you see the five dimensional chess game that came out on Steam a couple weeks ago? Yes, I did. I did not buy it because, of course I didn't, <laughs> because I don't know how I would ever play a five-dimensional chess game, but I think I tweeted about it, and I was like, or maybe I just shared it with uh, the other developers at my studio on Slack, but I was like, I could never play this, but I am so glad it exists. I'm so glad that somebody made a five-dimensional chess game, but no, I don't think, I mean, I think I'm pretty quickly in this game going to get to the point where I'm not clever enough to solve the puzzles and so the last thing i need is to try to figure out five dimensional chess okay so this guy needs to hit either this spot or this spot in order to get here he could also go here by going from the oh yeah let's do that one but oh wait no i can't oh, that was garbage don't do that 
Uh, okay, yeah, so I do need to go to one of these sides, which means I just need to make room like that. And then go. <laughs> MS Pate says, yeah, I think this game starts very, oh, nice, to freaking impossible. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the... Um, the the go games like the hitman go and 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 lara croft go where it's like you have these characters that can make these very simple moves and the first few levels feel like oh yeah this is oh, very straightforward it's kind of just satisfying relaxing to play this game because you know it's it's easy to sort of like trial and, and error my way to the solution and it's just kind of relaxing and low stress but then by the end you're like oh my gosh how does this puzzle work i can't figure it out and you start getting angry okay so we got a bishop moves diagonally and there we go all right so now i've got rooks and a bishop okay so to get here i'm gonna need to it looks like i need to get here and then to get here i need to go here and here and here okay so i need to get both of these guys all three of these guys have to get off their current spaces so that I can go doink, 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 and doink. That's a little too clean. <laughs> like, because each, basically, there's the exact number of tiles that were necessary, the exact specific tiles that were necessary to complete the puzzle, and no more, which is great. That's what they want to do early on. Like, they want to basically give me almost no choice but to eventually succeed. And they want to not have any red herrings, because right now they're still teaching me the mechanics. All right, so to get here... I need to either be here or here. And this is exactly, by the way, like working backwards, this is exactly the way that I would figure out chess moves when I used to play more. I would, you know, say, okay, I want to threaten this spot with my knight. So to do that from here, I need, and I would just sort of backtrace it and figure out where I could go. So from here, I can go here or here. And then I need to get here or here. And I can't get straight from here to there. So... I could get to the middle spot and then here okay yeah so I, I can get to this spot right here then I can get to either of these but then from here oh yeah so okay so this is made to make me think I need to get here from one of these two spots but actually I should probably get here from this spot so to get here from, so go to get to this spot, I need to get to this spot. This spot from the Okay, so I think that is what I want to do. So but no, because I've closed off the ability to get this guy out of here. Okay. So of course I can also get there from here. If I can, hmm. no, there's not really a good way to do. Oh, yes. Okay, so if I end up here, then I can go here, then here, then there. But, hmm. So I have to use this spot and this spot. So wait, okay, so, so the, my original plan was to use this spot, this spot, this spot to get here. But that means I have to move him here. And then this guy has nowhere to go because I have to use both of these. I have to use this tile to progress forward. Is there a way for me to not use this tile so I can get this guy off this spot? Or, and the only reason I need to move this guy off this spot is so that the bishop can get out of my way. So if, if I want to move either of these bishops out of my way, and this one seems like the most important one to move, then I'll need to move this. But this can't go anywhere if this one has to get off. Unless, let's see here. I've got room over here. Yeah, okay, okay, here's what I do. 
this one, then that one, then that one, then that one. Okay, so it looked like this spot only existed to balance out like the symmetry of the shape, but actually, again, there was an eco that economy of spaces that they defined early on where it's like every single space will be used. I, sh I could have maybe, t because I was trying to be smarter than that, I, I, yeah, I read that space is a red herring, but actually, you know, they actually were using their spaces economically, and that space existed in order to give me a place to, to hide the knight. So these are queens. Looks like they can go anywhere. Yeah, and all they're doing is just showing me that the queen can move either way. So, cool. This is just a tutorial. Hmm. MS Paint says, good seeing devs chilling with other games as well. Yeah, that's, um, I really, really try as hard as I can to, um, uh, what am I saying? To, uh, to, to play as many games as I possibly can in my spare time. Because I think, you know, every game that, even, even though I don't make games like this, playing games like this kind of broadens and, 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 uh, enriches my mind. It makes me sort of think differently about games, which does inform and improve the work that I do, you know. At the studio where I actually work. So, okay, so to get here, I need to be at one of these tiles. To get to one of these tiles, I need to be at one of these tiles. So I need to have like a, there's like a diagonal move I need to do. So it means I need to get these two guys at like opposite corners. And to, hmm. And, okay, I'm not going to use any of the middle spots, so I think what that means I need to do is that. There we go. Oh, this looks complicated. <laughs> okay, so to get here, I have to either be one of these outer wings or one of these spots. So I can go here, then here, then here. So if I can clear this off, and that, and then that, then I can go like this, like this, and like this. Okay, so I'm trying to get here. To get here with the knight, I have to go I have to end up on one of these spots. And then I can either come from here here, here. So I can either bounce like this, or I can bounce outward like that. So I need to move. So, so I need to clear a path. Like if that's there, and yeah, again, economy of tiles. No, not there. There. So yeah, every single tile is used. It's such a, it's a it's a kind of an interesting trope in game design where like a lot of times the player can infer from what is present in a scene. It's almost like Chekhov's gun. Like you can infer from what is present in a scene what the solution must be because they wouldn't have put something there unless it was useful. Um, because putting things in a scene takes effort and and so you can often make that assumption actually funny i read uh, i'm right now i'm reading a beautifully foolish endeavor by hank green and there's this great point where where uh, the it's it's done in first person and, and and the it was kind of a, a little bit of a you know fourth wall breaking irreverent narrator uh voice and they they go to this like you know, sort of the, the villain's lair, and it's next to an al active volcano. It makes a big deal about how it's next to an active volcano. And then the, the narrator, you know, breaks in and is like, by the way, I should tell you, this volcano is not going to erupt in this book. I should just say that outright, because I've been doing all this talking about a volcano. It seems like foreshadowing, but it's not. It's not going to erupt. Uh <laughs> And I just, I don't know, I really liked that, uh, just because, you know, it, it's it's just kind of funny for, for, for a book to be aware of itself. And similarly, I like when a, a game is aware of sort of the, the expectations and the tropes that you, wait, oh crap, I got two goals. Okay, so, well, hopefully, because it's tutorializing a new element, that means that... Um, 
that it'll be simple. There we go. Awesome Twitch dude asks, what's the best game of 2020 so far, Jeffrey? Um, uh, I'd probably say The Last of Us 2. I think that's probably the game that affected me the most this year, though, I mean, it really just kind of depends on the criteria you're using, because there's certainly other games that have captured my imagination in different ways. I'm really liking Dead in Vinland. Um, what else is new that I've really gotten into? I really liked um, uh, Gears Tactics. Um, I didn't finish that one, though. It, Games that take a lot of emotional energy usually have a much higher barrier for me to overcome, and, and Gears Tactics takes a lot of emotional energy to play. Um, and The Last of Us 2 is in this special zone where it takes a ton of emotional energy, but it also was so uniquely compelling that it helped me overcome that energy and I wanted to play it every day. Usually a game that demands that much energy actually makes me feel tired when I think about playing it, and, and it actually makes it harder for me to play it, even though... You know, it sometimes it can be it can be really impressive and have really high production values, and there's a lot to learn from it. It ends up being difficult. Um, okay, this doesn't look that bad. Um, well, let's see. Okay, so I can get that one here, and then there we go. Okay, so I'm trying to get, get here. So each of these is going to require me to probably hit that point. And then how do I get there? Here, 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 here. Okay, so it seems like there's a lot of bouncing around I have to do. So it looks like each of these knights is going to hit the diagonally opposite spot and they're going to use this spot this spot this spot this spot and at once i move both of them they'll have used all of these middle spaces so i so which leaves not a lot of room for me to get the bishops out of the way unless i'm constantly moving them to stay out of the way but as these guys are eliminating spaces oh and actually that's going to be a problem because like once i move one of them to this middle spot it'll eliminate it for the other one right so one of them is going to use this spot and then you know bounce around however it needs to and actually it doesn't matter which one does it the other one is going to have to use probably one of these spots. Okay, so if one of them goes up here, then back, then up, then hits that side and goes there, the other one is going to have to hit here, then... Okay, that's wrong. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so whichever side doesn't hit the middle, they're going to land on the one next to them on the, their own side. And so whichever one goes to the middle, does go to the middle, they have to make sure we don't use their own side, which means they have to go this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move them here. If I move them here, then here. Wait, was that what I said? here then here then here then here then here because i'm using all of these leaving this one open and this one open and this one open that's that's the one yeah that's in the middle that means that this one needs to go here here And then, wait, where did I go after that? Was it here? Here. Oh, this is so freaking complicated. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is figure out which spaces I can put the white pieces on. There might not be enough. 
But there has to be, because at the end, okay, at the end of the puzzle, these two gold knights are going to be at their destination squares. All the white pieces are going to be somewhere, and some of the tiles are going to be destroyed. But the destroyed tiles and the white pieces cannot be in the same place. So there are going to be five spots where the gold knights never touch. So of the navigable squares on the way to the destinations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten white spaces. Five of them the gold knights can never go to. So I only have five spaces I can use on my route to the gold destinations. So the one whoever whichever one, so if this one hits the middle, it goes middle, that's one, two, three, four. If he uses four, then this one can only use one, which does not seem reasonable. <laughs> So that can't be the answer. So maybe no, maybe nobody uses this middle spot. Maybe one of them goes like this. Okay, like this, and then like this. Three. Wait, how did I? How did I do this before? Okay, so hold on. To get to either of these, you have to land on the appropriate side. So if you hit like that, and that, and that. Okay, oh yeah, of course. Each of them can go diagonally. Nobody has to use this middle tile. Each one can go diagonally, then this way again, and then up. So you only have to land on two of these middle spots. So actually one of these tiles might actually be wasted. So. If each of them is only, so if together they're only using these two and these two, that means that this V-shaped section is open and these two are open. So the question is, can I get the knights to those spots, these guys to these spots, and then boink, 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 and boink, boink, Boink. Okay. We've boinked it. <sighs> Ranith Court is being very helpful in the chat, saying, just move that piece over there. Duh. Yeah, of course. Obviously. <laughs> oh, Emma's Paint is talking about um, Ancestors, the, the, the monkey evolving game. Um, that, yeah, it, it can be, like, so that was one that I tried. I think, I've, I, think I might have a video about Ancestors. I'm not sure. Um, oh no, no, I streamed it, but I think I, I wasn't really pleased with the quality of like the work that I did on it. So I think I never actually released it on YouTube, um, me playing ancestors, but, uh, but it was a fascinating game, really different from anything else I'd played, but it was also really, uh, it could be difficult to navigate sometimes. So yeah, it was one of those games where it's like, you could tell the systems were incredibly deep, but they were so deep. It was actually kind of, it's almost like how, you know, a really, really deep hole. It's kind of hard to see the bottom, <laughs> you know, unless they do a lot of work to light it. And it's, it, it, the game mechanics can be like that way, can be that way too. They can be insanely deep, but if you don't put a lot of extra work into you, into developing UX that lets the player see the depth, it can just be forbidding and confusing. And that, that, that can be a real challenge. But MS Paint points out, yeah, every time I tried it, I learned something new. And that's, yeah, so that's sort of the trade-off you have sometimes. You can make a game with a lot of really deep interconnected systems. The advantage is players can just keep discovering and keep finding new ways for different events to combine and different activities to sort of overlap with each other and like just keep discovering new emergent experiences. It can be amazing, but you pay a heavy cost because it's also really hard to teach players how to play a game like that. Okay, so... This might be my last puzzle tonight, because I am mentally tired, and this one looks pretty complicated. Okay, so, to land on these destinations, you either need to hit the middle. So I'm hoping it's not the middle, because if it's the middle, that means that I have to take these two guys two completely different ways. Oh, wait. The way they're stacked up, I probably do have to take them completely different ways. Okay, so I'm betting one of them will use the middle. So I think one of them is just going to go out to the side, to the middle, into the destination. The other one won't be able to do that. They'll... 
have to do something way more elaborate. They'll have to go either here or here. Yeah, so they're going to have to land on one of these corners at some point. And to get to the corner, they have to be here. And to get here, they have to be... Okay, now I'm confused. This is the one... Okay, no, wait, this is doable. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> so the easy route is out to the side, here, and then to one of the destinations. That's easy mode from this spot. The question is, how do I get there from this spot? I could go here, here, here. That's a dead end. Which means this is a dead end. And I go up and then down. That also feels like a dead end. So this is a dead end. What if I go here? It's not that different. Okay, what am I missing? How can this one get anywhere? Here, here here nothing I can go in a big circle if, if I was allowed to go in a big circle if I could get to one of these corners can I do that oh yes yes I can okay so I can hit this corner that corner oh but then I have to hit here and I can only do this once okay but I'm thinking about coming here and then I can go down hmm from here I can't really get anywhere except back there so that okay so these corner pieces are useless because I can I can only get there from one direction so they're they're dead ends so let's discount these these are not useful um, yeah and only one of these guys can pass through the middle but it can be either one. Okay, so that's okay, so that's the thing I'm realizing is this guy can easily get to the middle, but this guy can also get to the middle by taking a slightly longer route. So can this guy get there in a way that does not involve the middle? Yes. Guy can go to the side. Okay. So if one of them goes to the right, up the side and lands, the other one goes to the left. Wait a minute. Right, up the side and land. Another one goes. Oh, wait a minute. I just came up with two ways for the front one to do it. <laughs> okay, so. Front one can go to the side up here. This one can go here, 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 here. Can take a super freaking complicated route. That just doesn't feel right. But let's say, okay, so I have to clear these out, which means I need to get, okay, but I can. I can get these guys into those spaces, which means this guy can take this long, elaborate route through the middle to end up at one of these let's see which one this one can get to though so this one goes here oh okay so this guy goes here and, oh nope that didn't do anything useful i can move this guy off but he can't all right so actually Okay, okay, so, actually. I have to get this one over here first. Um, hmm. I feel like I am so close right now.
Can I move these guys onto? Okay, I can. This did not help at all. <laughs> I just, nope, I'm back where I started. <laughs> um, oh, I can do this. This, okay, yes. So now, holy crap, that was complicated. <laughs> Okay, uh, no. <laughs> I'm too tired to do this one tonight. But that's Knight's Retreat. Uh, this is, I mean, holy crap. It's really simple to learn up front, but man, do they get complicated. They just throw the book at you. Like, I don't even... Okay, this is one of the... The reason I love games like this is because I can't design them. <laughs> like there's certain kinds of games that I that I can design. I don't know how to design puzzles like this. They always mystify me. Um and so like because I'm, you know, this is just so outside my wheelhouse as a creator, I love playing them because they sort of like, I don't know, they challenge my mind and capture my imagination in a way that games that I sort of like there's games that I can sort of like decode and I see everything they're doing. This one I don't I don't see it. All I can do is just absorb myself in it and, and enjoy it. So yeah, there we go. Um, that is Night's Retreat. We will get out of here. And we'll see if I am awake enough to try something else. I don't know if I am.